Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, name's Dennis. So, it's a new year, so we're going to start it off with a new computer bill. Hope you like it. If you like it, hit that like, hit that bell for future notifications. Don't forget to check out the affiliate links down below in the description. And if you want to donate to the channel, there's always PayPal. Here we go. Okay, so we're starting off with the uh, case that I did a review on a little while back. And if you uh, didn't see it, the power supply is already in. Okay, it's already in here. We're ready to put in the hard drives, motherboard, all kind of stuff. And I've done the uh, motherboard prep. And I'll show you that just to go over it one more time. And there's also a video on how to install the CPU if you're looking for that. But one of the issues with it, as you look on the, the case, they only included a couple standoffs. One here, here, and that's it. So, thankfully they did provide us with more standoffs, and I'm using an ATX motherboard, so I'm going to need to put those standoffs in first, before I can put my motherboard down and secure it. So that's the first step. Now something to keep in mind as well is when you put your standoffs in, um, they are a bit snug when you first go to put them in, so that's not a big deal. You do have this little device here, which comes with your case, and you just want to put that over top. And there's a little light out of the way here. And you're just going to make sure you get it started. Make sure it's started properly, that you don't cross-thread it or anything else. If you do that, then you're going to cause yourself some issues. So once you get it in there nice and snug, do not over-tighten. So now you can see I've installed the uh, three standoffs here on the bottom. And I've got the three here. And there's three up top. Let me just show you that these three here so that is a typical installation for an etx motherboard so i've just set the motherboard in here but i'll just tell you what it is it's the aorus b450 pro wi-fi gaming motherboard just to let you know what it is now we've all seen memory installed but i'll go over it one more time just so you know so dim one and two just fill up those two slots with two eight gigabyte sticks of course here g skill memory i've got the AMD Ryzen 5 2600 processor. I'll be using the Kingston 480 gigabyte SSD along with the two terabyte uh, of storage from uh, probably Seagate. Now all I've done to this point is I just set the motherboard on top of the uh, standoffs. Okay, so basically really what you need to do is reposition. Okay, so when you set it down, I'll, but this one did not have an IO shield. Okay, it came with the built-in I.O. shield on it. So I can show you that just one more time since you may not have seen the other videos. I'm just going to lift it up. And there you go. So it's all built on. So our motherboard standoffs are there. We're just going to set it in place. Make sure it's aligned over the holes. And of course it's going to fit into our slot. Once we position it in, we're going to put our screws in. To secure the motherboard to our case. So just in case you're wondering, the M3 screw, okay, it looks like this. That's the one you're going to use to put into your standoffs to secure it. Okay, so once you've established your M3 screws, your motherboard screw, now you're just going to go ahead, put all your screws in to secure your motherboard. So you're going to start here or anywhere you want, doesn't really matter, and you're just going to secure it. Just going to put it in. That's all there is to it. And you're going to repeat that process for all nine screws because this is an ATX motherboard. Okay, so now you can see I've got all the screws, all the proper places. And so the next thing we're going to do is take the fan. I already twist tightened it off. And you're just going to plug it into a system fan. Now the one that came with this case is three pin. Just look at it. Make sure you've got your um, little divot there. See how that's got a little cutout looks like. Make sure that goes so it goes on top of this one on the back here for your system fan. So you're just going to take it, put it on, and make sure you're on the three screws. And you're just going to push down. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to figure out a way to hide this later, but for now, that's good to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is connect the 24 pin, which is going to go in here, and your 8 pin, which is over here in the corner. So I'm going to bring that up, connect those off, and then we'll continue. 
Okay, so something I wanted to go over on this case a second time. Uh, when I first connected, it was just to show the fans and show it lit up with the RGB 200 millimeter fans in the front. But in order to do all that at that time, I had to use a Molex connector, or so I thought. Turns out, not the case. So I wanted to go over it one more time and show you how everything can work. And there's different variations that they provided to just basically give you more options. So let's go over that. So with your 200 millimeter fans, okay, these are the two millimeter fans, 200 millimeter fans in the front. Okay, if you want to just plug those in, you can get rid of this whole stretch of cable here that basically splits it off and then plugs into your motherboard. But you get a whole bunch more cables there that you don't want to use. Simply detach them, pull them apart. And you just have your two cables plug into the motherboard and you're good to go. Now, this will give you more reach, but if you don't need it, gives you a better cable management. Okay, so we're going to move aside from that. We don't need the mullets anymore. Now, you've got the RGB. So here's your connector that came with it. Both of these, again, are going off of the mother, uh, off of the case. And you do have to connect both of these. Okay, both of these are connected, plugged in together. Splits off. So now you've got this one that's going to plug into the motherboard. And this one gives you, so you can plug in another LED connector. All right. So all the stuff that you had before, which is this, if you wanted to plug it in, power with SATA, that's great, but you don't absolutely have to do that. If you're using the software that came with your system or your motherboard, you don't need it. You can set it aside. So now you've eliminated the Molex connector, you've eliminated this, and you've eliminated this extra cabling. So that's going to clean things up an awful lot. So let's get on to the rest of the uh, build. So we're going to take and connect our 24 pin. Now I've got the tester on here, so I got to release that. So let's just get that off. And we got to find the best place to feed it through. Now they've got this cutout on the inside to hide your cables. So find out where your thing is on the inside, plug it in, and then we'll connect it on the other side. So I'm going to have a look and see which one's the best one. Okay, so I determined that this is the best one. And I'll connect it on the other side. But before I do that, I had to find my CPU. Make sure it says CPU. You're not using PCIe or anything like that. And this is going to go up into the little slot up on the top. You're going to feed that one up into here. And hopefully it'll fit. Hopefully it's long enough. And then I'll tie that off in the back. And there's lots of room for tie downs and everything there. And that'll clean that up. And then I'm going to connect it on the other side. So I'll show you that in a second. So something to be mindful of is this is going to hide part of this cable, but it's kind of a tight fit with this particular power supply. So make sure when you're putting it in, look for that notch. There's going to be a notch on this side. It's going to be right here. You can't see it that well, but it's right here on this side. So you want to turn it so you have your notch. And like I say, I might have to have an extension if I can't get this in there properly. But you want to basically bend it so it's going to go inside. So we're going to get it in here. So, so I didn't get it in here. It's, I heard it clip in here. So it clicked in place. It's pretty tight fit. Now it doesn't hide this here, the uh, relish color, but you know, the best you can do, hide it as best you can. Now, if, if you didn't want to hide it behind here, you can bring it behind here, bring it out, and basically it'll do the same thing. So. Just keep that in mind. So now we're going to plug in our uh, CPU cable. So I've got my CPU cable here. There's the 8 pin it's going to plug into up here in the corner. Again, make sure your uh, little clips are lined up. And then just go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so it's clipped in there. Clip was on the top. And that's all there is to it. So now we can tuck some of that in the back. We'll tie that off. And uh, gives it a nice clean look. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the SSD and the 2 terabyte hard drive. So installing our hard drive basically looks like this. 
all right and you've got the connectors here okay so you got your SATA connector and then your power connector so they're both SATA but uh, they're just different types so you've got this type so you've got that type there you can see the L shape so just make sure it lines up with the L shape on here and then you just plug it in now you can do that after which we will once we put the hard drive in so putting the hard drive in in this is pretty simple just pull this out it's going to slide out and you're just going to put it in here so once you've got it in place just simply line up the holes okay it'll just slide in once you find the right spot so once you've lined it up push it forward now i did find it a little tricky to line this up not that big a deal but a little bit different than some cases i've used still pretty easy you'll see that slide in and then it'll just click in place and then you're done with your 3.5 inch hard drive install so now we're going to turn the case around because the ssd is going to mount behind the case and i'll show you where okay so something i have never done before and so i didn't know how to do it so i looked it up and i'm going to show it to you so you know how to do it if you ever come across this basically you're going to mount your ssd one here and one here if you want to i'm just going to put one here but how do you do that because there's no screws no nothing well it's simple turns out there's eight of them in here and what they do is they mount you just screw them into the back of your ssd and then you take your ssd and the heads of these right here are simply going to line up these holes once you got them lined up just pushes in and it's it's in there pretty snug now i've got it facing up i will probably have it facing down but i just wanted to show you how to mount that because i had never seen that before and it, it is in there pretty snug it's not going to just fall out so just something that uh very useful information to know i think okay so some of the other things i've done right now is i've taken all these cables and put them in the back in here the ones that i'm not going to use or i've already used including the uh, two for the PCIe which is for your graphics card I've connected the um, connections your SATA connection and your power SATA for the hard drive the SSD I've connected both of them over here as well I'm going to twist tie this off and just uh, nice it up a little bit more and then I'll put that through to the front so then we'll turn around to the front and we'll continue now the only thing that's left is all the case connections which are your fans and everything here and we're going to get to that afterward so just trying to show you how i go about doing things and make sure everything's nice and tidy so once you put your case cover back on i know i said tidy i don't know where i'm getting that from when things are nice and tidy um then you can put your back panel on and it'll be nice and uh It'd be easier to open if you need to get back in there change something up you want to change the hard drive up put a bigger ssd on there simple you just pull this out undo your connections put in the bigger one reconfigure it and you're good to go and i have a video on uh, cloning an ssd so all you have to do is clone the ssd to the bigger ssd once they become bigger and cheaper in price maybe um, so that you can easily change it around Okay, hey, so now that I've figured out where the SATA cables are going to go, um, just mainly which one I want to plug into and how to route them. So I'm just going to plug them in. So make sure you do the one on the bottom, one on the bottom, because otherwise the one on the top is going to be harder to do. So the same thing, get it lined up. Now, when you're doing this, make sure the direction of your L. So when you're looking in the back here, that you're going in the right way. So line them up, push it in, you hear that little click. And now both of your hard drives are connected. They're connected in the back. Now there's one final step, which is of course putting your graphics card. But before you do put the graphics card in, you want to go down here to your LEDs and connect all the LED connectors. Connect all your fans to the system fans. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. This motherboard, the um Everything is color coded. Now they do that so when you're looking at your manual, they can tell you what color and what goes where. And of course, you can see on the very bottom, uh, right there, down here, it tells you it's a front panel, front panel connectors right here. 
All right. So we're going to go by it one by one and tell you what they are before I plug them all in, just so you know which you have to do. So starting from the left, the two yellow pins are your power LED. Directly below that is your blue, which is your hard drive activity LED. Now don't worry if you don't have that on your case, you won't have that connection or that cable, I should say. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. So in case you're wondering what those cables I'm talking about are, that's them there. So you get PLED, positive, negative, you power, HDD, and reset. So now I'm going to plug in the ones that I just mentioned. Now I usually start with a hard drive, LED, HDD, LED, on the bottom, because then it makes it easier to put the other one on top, which will be your P, your power, LED, positive and negative. Positive starting on the left, negative on the right. So once you've got that done, the next one is going to be your reset and your power switch. So the power switch is the red one and the reset is the gray one. Or sorry, the, the reset is the green one. So now we've got the green one plugged in. Now doesn't matter if positive or negative, and the fact that you've even started to uh, not even bother mention it because it won't matter how it's plugged in, it's still going to work. So then we're going to do our power on the top, which is your red, and it'll again be on the left, positive, and on the right, negative. So just in case you're wondering, the next two pins on the right again, the gray ones, are like a chass chassis intrusion. So if you've got the cable and you bought a particular case, so it will tell you if somebody's opened the case, that's what that's for. So nine times out of 10, you're not gonna have that unless you're working in, in like an enterprise uh, location, like a company. So you don't have to worry about that. The next one over on the top, the orange is your speaker. So if, if your case came with a speaker, you can plug it in. If it doesn't, well then don't worry about it. The one on the bottom, which is purple. Now the one on the bottom right, uh, like I said, is purple. You will not normally need to use that. So in this case, the, you got three cables left from the case. You got your USB, your HD audio, and then you've got your USB 3.0. You see that little clip right here? That's how you know if you're going to put it in the right place. Because on your motherboard, let me just zoom out here again. So, so the next cable I'm going to plug in is the HD audio, which is going to go right over here. Now, just to point something out, if you look on it, there's a blank space. And there'll be a pin missing on this one. So when you put it in, make sure you look for that missing pin to line them up properly and put them in. So that missing pin is on the bottom, so we're going to turn it upside down to line those up and see how now it goes in pretty easy. And you're just going to push it in, make sure it goes all the way in, and that's it. Now, don't worry about these cables too much, because once we're done, you're going to have your shroud, and it's going to hide all those cables, so it'll give you a cleaner look. So now we're going to do our USB and our USB 3.0. We'll start with the USB 3.0. Again, line up that little notch. Find your USB 3.0 slot. My eyesight's terrible, so I have to find it here. And it's going to go right in here. Again, check that notch. Notch is on the top here. So line it up. Okay, so the only thing left at this point is your USB. So there's a USB slot right beside it, so we're just going to plug that in. Again, make sure you look for that blank space, so you know you're plugging it in the right way. And that's it. Now we're going to install our graphics card. Uh, we still have to hook up the um, RGB fans and all that kind of good stuff. So that's coming up, so it won't be long. Alright, so one of the issues I've got, your 200 millimeter case fans, it's going to be powered, connected here, you got your two different connections. All right, and one of these is going to plug into your motherboard. Okay, so this one here, 
But that's not what's important. The cables themselves for the fans are not long enough. So you have to take the two of them and you are going to have to use this monstrosity here. Now you could go out and buy cable fan extensions if there is such a thing, which I'm assuming there probably is. But look at the mess that's going to create. Yes, I can hide it, but sorry, call that a fail. That, that's a, a big uh, minus for this case in my books. Even though it's pretty good, I'm taking that, uh, I'm taking a point off for that, if there's such a thing. So in order to get the cleanest cable management I can get, I took the connector, all that mess of cables, fed it through the back here, in here, on the top by the CPU power, there's a system fan connector. So I'm going to plug it into there, and then I'll be able to hide the cables in the back. That'll still allow me to have a bit cleaner look. And hopefully, I'll be able to do the same thing with this somehow or another. Okay, so a rookie mistake that I realized after it. Um, you have to feed these cables, all your different cables, up through this little hole here first. Okay, if you don't feed them up through there, you can't get your shroud back on. All right, so having fixed that, the only thing left to plug in is our RGB. Now, right down here is your RGB on this motherboard. Now, the 12 volt is what we're going to want. And the only thing you have to remember on that is line up the positive arrow, which will be on here. There will be a positive arrow. Okay, it's in that corner. I don't know if you can see it, but it's on this side, left-hand side. And it's going to go into the far left of here. Now, this particular one says 12 volt, and then it has all the colors, the red, green, blue, and then it has the W on the far right. So you've only got a 4-pin RGB, but you've got a 5-pin on the motherboard. Just forget about the white one. That is if you're connecting a, a different type of strip. So for our case, we're just going to plug in the RGB starting on the left making sure the positive goes to the 12 volt positive. Okay, so don't get that wrong, or it's gonna be, it's, it could cause you some real issues. Okay, so I just push that on there, just pushes in, nothing more to it. Now I did take the, cause you got the mustard color, the yellow and black, and I just used electrical tape, just to, and I put a little bit of a wrap around them just to hide the cables. Just so it'll look better in our build. Make sure if you're going to do something like that, that you're using the correct thing. Um, and most importantly, if it's going to touch your motherboard at all, that is not conductive. Because if it's conductive and something drops off and hits your motherboard, now you got a dead motherboard, potentially. All right. And I did the same thing with the power supply cord. I'll just show you right there. Again, electrical tape. I just made it so it looks a little better so when you see that from this view not that noticeable it's certainly less noticeable than the relish type cables that you're going to see otherwise so it just makes it look a little bit better so you don't have to do that obviously and i don't recommend it actually it's the first time i've ever done it so if i have any issues well, we'll find out, but I don't think there will be. Electrical tape is not conductive. I've taped off everything that matters. So now we're going to put in our graphics card. That's what these cables here are for. Plug into it. And then I'll tuck whatever I don't need back inside here. And hopefully hide that completely. So that's what we're going to do next. So in order to put the graphics card in, you have to remove these screws. Okay, and take these pieces out here. And then it's going to go into the slot. So, i got to go get my graphics card. Okay, so the graphics card I got is just a bit of an older graphics card. It's a Sapphire HD 7950. Still very reliable graphics card. So, you've got your steel reinforced slot here. And I've already get, took my two slide pieces out here. So, now we're just going to fit it in. And line it up. And you push it in. And you feel that click in place. And this little clip here is going to lock that in place. So now we're going to we have to lift that up just a little bit. 
and then we're going to put our two screws in. So that's all there is to that. Okay, so once you've secured those, just tighten these both up. Make sure they're good and tight. That's going to set in there. Now the only thing you have left to do is connect your PCIe graphics cards. Again, making sure where the clip is on here and making sure that goes in the right direction. So I already knew this was a six pin, so I've already tied off the extra two. If you need an eight pin, you can just let go of the twist tie and then you'll be able to plug it in. So again, you hear that click, you know it's in place. So I'm going to repeat that process with this one here. I'm going to break that one back, just tie it off at the twist tie because I only need six on this side as well. So repeat the same process with this one. Make sure that clicks in place. All right. Now the tape's not keeping it completely off, but that looks better than it would have. Now I can tuck those cables down a little bit. Hopefully. Well, there's not much I can do, but... Yeah. I'm probably going to put a twist tie in there just to hold them in place a little bit. Just to make sure it's not against the tempered glass. And it should be good. So it is showing a little bit of the yellow. I could put another piece of electrical tape on here. Um, I may do that just to give it a little bit better look. Um, just for aesthetics. So I put it on. It's just loosely setting on there, but I'll keep an eye on it. Make sure it stays. If it doesn't, well, then I'll take it off. But I didn't put it on there too tight because in case we have to change this, we don't want to have to take too much electrical tape off. So at this point, we're basically done. The only thing we have left to do is to put our tempered glass on the front. I'll do a little bit of a uh, little bit more cable management in the back. And then we'll fire it up and have a look. Okay, so there's one more thing I forgot to mention. This has Wi-Fi in the motherboard. So this base came with it. It's magnetic. And you can set it anywhere in the case because the case is steel. And then you have your two connectors here. You're just going to plug those into here. And then you're going to have Wi-Fi. Now I've already plugged in a keyboard, so that's what that is. Once we're done, we're going to fire it up. So once it's connected up, you can move this around anywhere you want. Okay, but on the case, of course, is more convenient because you've got the extra room here if you want to do that. Now it doesn't matter which side you put them in, you can switch them around, doesn't make any difference. So let's get to firing this puppy up. Okay, so everything is up and running. What's, what lights up on this particular case on the inside is lit up. The RGB in the front is lit up. And so the one thing that's left is to see if the software that comes with Gigabyte will now control the RGB on here. If it doesn't, then that means I have to connect that uh, little other connector that came with it and make sure it goes on. So a little bit more information, it's going to show you on the screen with the Gigabyte app. It shows you what version of the operating system you're using, which is Windows 10 Pro. It's a Ryzen 5 2600 6 core processor. We're using 15.95 gigabyte of RAM. It's the HD 7900 series graphics card from AMD, Radeon series. And then our upload and download speed. So I've left the temper glass off for now. One thing I wanted to show you, App Center. From Gigabyte has a uh, feature called RGB Fusion. So when I go into it over here, it's going to tell you to wait a second, and then it's going to come up, and now it has all your controls for your RGB. So if you look over here on the case, fans, and even inside here, they're all the color I set. So I want it to be green, goes to green. So whatever color you choose, you're good to go. If I wanted to go uh, pulse, All right? And there's, of course, double flash. Okay. And let's do demo mode. Why not? So it just goes through and shows you all the different things it's capable of. And there you have it. Did not need the Molex at all. Did not need that extra like RGB adapter. You could use it. Maybe I'll need it for something else in the future.
Now I did want to show you one more thing, and that was that you have an advanced feature that when you click it, you can highlight, these are all the areas on the motherboard that you can control. Okay, so you have to select the region. Once you've got it, it's going to be selected, a little box shows up. So let's go to the front fans. There you go, it lights up. Okay, now it says, okay, what do you want to do? You can go pulse. And you could save it. I'm not going to. And then again, you can go back into your RGB Fusion again. I shouldn't have exited. Actually, I should have just gone back. To just basic. Now, Intelligent gives you more advanced features like your temperature, uh, CPU usage, your fans, all that kind of good stuff. And, of course, back to basic for our RGB. I happen to kind of like green. So for now, I'm going to leave it at green. And you can speed it up down here with the speed. So you can make it faster, slower. Okay, just by clicking. Just by clicking it. And it flashes every time you click it. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's just a thing. And you can cycle the colors. Okay, so obviously have some fun, play around with it, choose your different schemes of what you want it to do, and it'll do it. Right now I had clicked on the random, and it kind of goes to one color. Takes a few seconds. First I didn't think it was working, and then I realized so it's, it's got like a time delay. And then it changes to a green, and then to a blue, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a quick peek show you the different changing colors and I'll move around to the side of it just to show you what it looks like with the tempered glass back on. And there you go. Now something else I want to mention, I know I keep doing this, because when I find things out, I want to make sure I pass it on so you're not misled. Somebody mentioned to me, because I didn't realize, these screws are captive screws. So once you get them out so far, they'll set there. Same thing on the other side. And they're meant to stay in the tempered glass so you don't lose them. So I learned something. Now hopefully you learned something too. So I hope you like this. Great, great system. Of course, that's my opinion. All right, everybody. So that's kind of a bit of more of a uh, in-depth than I usually go into when I do a build. Um, but I want you to see some of the more features of this. My previous video, I said you needed the Molex and you needed that adapter. Turns out, once you build your system, you don't need that. Now, I didn't need that in that other video because without it, I was only using the power supply, I had no motherboard uh, in it to show you what it's going to look like. So right now, I showed you pretty much everything I can on a system build, uh, an overview if you will, and how to connect things, um, how to work with the uh, Gigabyte uh, RGB Fusion a little bit. So hope you like this video, if you like it hit that like, if you don't, well you know what to do, leave me a comment constructive nice comment would be nice <laughs> not you haters um and if you have any questions let me know and don't forget hit that bell for future notifications and as always i appreciate you and i thank you very much for watching and if you got this far wow good job <laughs> see you next time